Who got heroes ruin relic string, relic string, relic string? Who got heroes sucks and they took away business from Kyle? What's going on, everybody? Adrian, Pipe Dream, Hookah. Today I got a review for you guys. It's gonna be on the uh, legendary relics ring from over at Kyle with Relics Bowls. Um, good friend of mine, good guy. I'm actually using a camera that he has lent me um, to do some work on my channel right now. So that's how tight we are. I didn't want to talk about the Hookie Heroes Relics Ring debacle at all in this video, but after I mowed through it in my head 80, 90, a billion times, I realized that I'm going to take the beginning of this video to warn everybody about Relics Ring. Not Relics Ring, Hookah Heroes. I'm looking at my camera, am I quite in frame? Is it okay to have this much overhead? I don't know, maybe I'll like, I don't know, sit up like that? That's probably fine. Um, yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, because I know a lot of the people who follow me here on YouTube aren't necessarily coming from one of the big enthusiast hookah groups over on Facebook, whether it be the Hookah Lounge, Hookah Unbiased, um, hookah Enthusiasts or Hookah University, any of those, the AM Hookah Podcast Facebook group. All you people probably know pretty well what's going on, so I'll leave a little uh, timestamp in the description or something so you can fast forward through it. Or just watch, and I'm gonna take about a minute here to explain what happened um, very loosely. I'm not gonna give away too many details because I'm just gonna give away what matters. A craftsman by the name of Kyle Smith who makes these beautiful bowls called Relix Bowls. Relics rings in this case. You've probably saw it in the thumbnail. If not, I'll break it out in just a second. But he made, went through all this hard work to make these bowls. And this gentleman by the name of Ron, he is the owner of a business that I imagine is defunct by this point, called Hookah Heroes. And what wound up happening was Kyle wanted to sell his bowls exclusively through Hookah Heroes. He got burnt by Hookah Heroes. Ron all of a sudden went ghost on everybody. A lot of people ordered a bunch of stuff and never got their orders. There have been issues with Hookah Heroes even before this with him getting orders out to people. And um, when people reached out at first, he was like, we'll just have your credit card like charge it like ha have it claim get it to refund and most of us who are adults over the age of 18 understand that that's not how we should be using our credit cards that's not how a business should be operating and this all happened while he was selling the relics rings there was a big debacle with how the relics rings were released um there was supposed to be this text message that not a lot of people got onto for the pre-release um a bunch of people got it that maybe weren't the first ones who should have got it um, he tried to start blaming like Shopify crashing and trust me in this hyper niche market that we're in I guarantee if every single one of us went on someone's site to buy something we would not crash the market now if there's some more laid-back hookah smokers there's a lot of us here in the states just most of us don't absorb this content so I'm talking to you people who actually go out and look for like reviews on products like the one you're looking at today that said fuck hookah heroes don't buy from fucking hookah heroes or shithead Ron this is not any fault of Kyle's. Kyle is a beautiful man, a wonderful craftsman. We'll be going over his bowl today, and um, that's gonna end the rant for Hookah Heroes. This is just a warning that you need to watch you shop with, because you can get burnt, and you need to watch you sell with, because not every company is created equal. Luckily, Kyle has gone solo selling his bowls. He's got three batch releases coming out right now, so that's like 75 bowls. You keep him busy for over a year, because these are very detailed bowls, but a lot of people are gonna be very happy, and I'm excited for the future of Mr. Kyle Smith. That said, let's break down the relics bowl. I'm not going to be going into any crazy dimensions or anything like that. These are made by hand and they're all very unique. They're paired. We'll start there. All of these bowls have a like a brother or sister bowl or whatever you want to call it. So here's mine and um, I'll probably edit in a little bit of b-roll because I know that this isn't very good. Like if the camera were to zoom in right here, this is me cueing myself to zoom in and editing. You'll see that it's a little bit grainy and doesn't do it justice. So we'll have some high def photos. But this is the Relics Ring Bowl and I'll get to why they call it the ring in a second. But all these bowls have a brother or sister bowl that look very similar and are very thematic so they're paired me and matt Deason from over at the am hookah podcast have the brother and sister bowls for um for our relic spring so that's kind of cool let's talk about what the relic spring is and i'm just gonna go ahead and say this is gonna be a two-part video by the way because we're gonna go over how to pack and use the relic spring bowl also but that's a completely different video totally different subject matter that's more technical as a matter of fact there's a new Shh. can i say it no there's going to be a new show on the Am Hookah podcast called Technical Difficulties, and the first episode goes live tonight, and um, it's probably going to be right after the release of this video, so maybe you guys should go over there and check it out, because we're going to be 
exploring technical difficulties and how to avoid them. That said, there will be a video on how to load and use the Relics Ring. But let's go over the anatomy of a Relics Ring real quick. Um, relics Wing. Relics Ring. And uh, there's two pieces. This is one of the very few two-piece bowls that exist in the world. Because I'm going to do that, and that's probably going to make some people go, whoa. And some of you guys are going to be like, yeah, duh, this is, we all know about this. I've got a split demographic in my group. Quit judging me, Paul. But this, this bottom piece is a standalone bowl. And you can use it for just foil or an HMD if you want to, but that's not the intention. And that's not how you get the best use out of the bowl. Also, a little bit of anatomy. There's going to be the Hookie Heroes logo down here. If I could scratch that out, I would. Um, but I can't, and I'm not willing to harm this bowl in any way, even though it was kind of a... Uh... <sighs> the hype was diminished a bit by Ron, unfortunately. But hopefully we can get that hype back up for everybody, Kyle. Can you tell this is probably going to be a good review? Um... And like I said, B, I'm going to rely a little bit on B-roll, but these just beautiful hand glaze. And when you flip the bowl over, it actually appears to change color because on the underside, there's this, I don't know what they call it. It's some type of blue that Kyle uses and it's gorgeous. But um, the hype, what people were really excited about, this is a gentleman by the name of Daniel. This gentleman by the name of Daniel, I'm trying to actually enunciate my words, um, gave Kyle an idea. And that was, what if you made a clay ring to put over your bowl that hid the foil and maybe gave you the option to have a lip for an HMD. And that's exactly what they've done here with this bowl. And I can say that it works perfectly. All the demos are gonna be in the how to use video and that's going to be come out, coming out next week. Um, today is Friday, I'm aiming for Tuesday. So as you can see, you would normally foil it, put the ring down, tear the foil so it's got no foil visible from the sides. And if you're gonna be using HMD, no foil necessary, drop your Lotus, drop your Provost. And if you're going to be using um, like a, I don't know, an apple on top provost, foil it, then put your apple on top on top. Um, this works perfectly. This is not an issue. These bowls are amazing when it comes to functioning the way that they were intended to function. Now I'm going to get into some actual qualities of the way the bowl smokes. Um, I've got a few negative things to say, sorry. Kyle, um, I, if I'm nothing if not as honest as I possibly can be at any given moment. Um, so let's go over the negative stuff first because I, I believe in delivering bad news first. The, the draw on this bowl is slightly restricted. Part of that's due to the narrow spire. The spire is much more narrow than what we are now used to in the uh, hookah community. And some of this is probably due to how high the spire actually is. You do have a good amount of room between the foil or where the spire is and where your fo foil would lay. But if you're going to draw off of your hookah and your foil is not drum tight, which is hard to fail at that with this ring because this ring is going to hold the foil drum tight. But if you mess anything up, um, you're going to get some foil drag. So because of that, you have to poke holes above the spire right here, which normally we don't do because that's just moving hot air directly into the bowl, which is somewhat unnecessary. But I think that it's actually fine with this bowl. Um, I just poke holes all over the top, a lot more holes than I would normally poke, and holes right here in the center, and I get good airflow. When I do it this way, it smokes perfectly. I just want to say that that's not the way we normally do it, so I have to kind of bring it to you in a negative light, if that makes sense. But other than that, this bowl smokes amazing. The heat retention is insane. The clay is very thick. I'm not going to break out a micrometer and measure it because I don't have a micrometer. Also, they're all going to be different. But one thing I can promise you is they're all going to be very, very, very thick. Um, and because of the ring, there's going to be a lot of heat retention and there's going to be a lot of heat uh, diffusion down through the bowl, which is also amazing for having long sessions. And it is a shisha saver. Um, I think when I'm packing tangiers into this bowl, I can maybe, maybe get 14 to 18 grams of tangiers dense packed. Because you want to do a slight underpack with this bowl because of how well it's going to retain heat. And you also want airflow, so that's important. But good points there. And I know it seems like I'm kind of going all over the place, but it's very hard to take a bowl like this and review it shotgun style because there's so many things to go over. So ultimately, the message I want to deliver with the Relics Ring Bowl is we have alpaca bowls, we have hookah jam bowls, we have liberty bowls, all of these companies that make kind of uh, cookie cutter bowls. They're all very good. They perform outstanding. But we have some other companies like Stone, Mason, and I would say Relics that are bringing us these very high end artisan bowls that are at a higher price point, but are very worth the purchase. Now there are some other topics and points I'm going to hit in my next video, but I really wanted to put something out saying buy the Relics Ring if you can get your hands on one, which will be very difficult for the time being because Kyle's got his hands full. But now that he's selling them solo, I have full belief that Kyle's going to be a big player in the artisan bowl market. 
Um, as far as like really detailed uh, performance notes and um, how to pack it and stuff, that's going to be in the next video. But I'm going to go ahead and rate this bowl very simply and as unbiased as I can at a 7 out of 7. This bowl hits all the points for me. There's only one little negative point that you can repair with a slight adjustment and it takes literally seconds of extra time to do so. And it smokes beautifully every time. I think I do want to talk about one more tiny thing. And this one is going to be less of an issue for people who are very careful. But there is this ring and it does come off and it is fragile. And if you drop it ever, it's going to split. And if you want a new ring for your relics bowl, that's hard to do. I think the only way to do it is to ship your bowl back to Kyle. He has to cast a new ring for it, cook it, make sure it fits, ship it back, and you can't break that next one because that's going to be an expensive process. And as you can imagine, you're probably going to have to foot the shipping bill on that. So that's going to be um, extra money that you don't want to spend. So even though I'm still going to give this a 7 out of 7, because we have to grade these artisan bowls differently than we would grade a hookah gem bowl or an alpaca bowl, because we're judging this on aesthetic as well as um, build quality and functionality and a few other things that just go into like what makes this into an artisan bowl whether it's the flip it you get a different color whether it's the insane engravings that kyle does by hand we judge this differently that's why it's giving the seven out of seven but if i were to judge this just like any other bowl i would give it a five out of seven because this is fragile if you're not careful you will break it i know a few people that have broken their relics rings and um that is sad and i don't use it every day because it is kind of an art piece that i do not want to ruin but um yeah that said Seven out of seven. I think I've said it three times already. I'll say it four. Seven out of seven. Beautiful bowl. Would recommend picking it up. Wouldn't recommend um, shopping with Hookie Heroes ever if they come back. And I just wanted to reiterate that because I have a feeling Ron's going to try to come back. And um, we shouldn't let him do that. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for part one of the Relics Rings. And again, um, if you want all the nitty gritty details and packing and stuff, I will link this in the description when the video comes out, but it's not out yet. So keep your eyes peeled, hit that subscribe, like this video, I'm shilling myself, I'm going to make a habit of that here in 2019, but uh, if you want how to pack it, how to use it, how to heat manage it, I've got a video coming out on that as well, much more technical, probably going to have a different camera setup, camera setup because can't do that in here. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, happy smoking.